All right, y'all. What's up? <clears throat> I was told <laughs> that Chris and Michelle did a heartfelt apology on The Breakfast Club. And I ain't had nothing to do because it was a slow day at work yesterday. So I was like, let me pop in and see what she's talking about. And so I watched the entire interview and um, I guess we'll, we'll, we'll discuss it. I wrote down a couple of points because my mind, I'm right back at that place where I always get, where I can't remember nothing. I can't just, I'm just overwhelmed at this point in my life. And I just don't, I, I don't know what to do about it. So we're just going to pretend like I'm not. Anywho. Um, she began the interview. Well, first of all, let's discuss how she looked. She came to the breakfast club in all black. <laughs> Mama looked like she was just mourning. She looked like uh, the time had come for the end of something. And I was like, oh, this just can't be, this can't be good. Because when girls go to set the record straight, normally they pop in with, you know, a fur or um, they'll have on a festive color, uh, aquamarine or something. Mama came with this all black ensemble, black, you know, dark brown or black lipstick, dark makeup, a dark just little fro. And I'm like, oh, she came. She came for, for death. She, she did not come. Oh, she's too hot to have these windows up, guys. Um, she did not come for healing. Mama came for death. That's like the first thing I thought she had. You know, this this 4C afro, which, you know, I live for 4C. Um, on her head, just there. It's just dark. You know, I'm used to seeing her with a, like a streak of blonde or something. She didn't give me that. Um, it was just very dismal. Um... And she kind of started off by saying that she does not support Trump. And see, that's where I was lost. I started off the interview just completely and totally lost. Because I said, okay, you don't vote for Trump. I mean, you didn't vote for Trump. You, you, don't, you don't like Trump. You don't support him. Okay, cute. What was the point of you caping for Tina? Because Chris said, you came smooth out of nowhere. You just dropped from the sky and said, oh, Tina, girl, they hate you because you voted for Trump. They're choice shaming you. How dare, how dare they? And it's like, okay, sis, but where have, where have you been? We ain't seen you in so, so long. And you dropped down out of the heavenly heavens to cape for Tina. Tina, of all girls. Like, <laughs> what in the world? You came just, just, I'm still, like, that part right there, that I don't support Trump. But let me, you know, come from obscurity and give y'all long, long who litigations of, of knowledge about everything I've gone through in the last, you know, 10-ish months of my life. Like, since you were gone for a reason, you were gone to give us some time to, you know, think about letting you back in. You were not gone so that you could pop back up and cape for somebody who we have also kicked to the curb. And honestly, a lot of us had kicked her to the side well before she came out talking about she had voted for Trump. A lot of the girls were sick of Tina from just simply from her show and from her behavior, from her attitude. A lot of us, I, I ain't cared about Tina Campbell, uh, low these 20, I'm going to go ahead and say, I'll say 18 years because when they did come out, when did they come out? I don't care. I haven't cared about Tina and, and Erica since. Well, I do. I, I love Erica. I do. I love Erica. I want Erica and Monica to do a song together because I feel like they look alike. And in the music video, I wouldn't know who's who. <laughs> but anyway, Bluebell. I'm sorry. Every time I see the Bluebell truck, I get excited and I think about ice cream. Um, but yeah, just like a lot of the girls were just completely through with Tina just simply because of how she acts on the show, her, and oh, I just, oh, I cannot, I cannot love you, Teddy. I'm sick of it. You've done too much, but we must forgive because I'm a Christian and I love you so much, but I'm going to keep bringing up the fact that you cheated on me. I'm tired of this. I hate you, but I love you so much, Teddy. You're my husband and we're going to have to do everything together. We're joined at the hip. And Teddy just sitting over there like, I really don't like you. I really don't even know how I ended up in this situation with you and I'm ready to go release him release teddy he trashed too but let him go be trashed somewhere by himself y'all be trashed in separate places but this is not the tina campbell uh rendition i'm talking about chrisette so let me get on um she then proceeded to go on and say she knew um that she knew that it wasn't the right choice uh that, that trump wasn't the right choice for president and this is when i'm sitting here because now when i hear chrisette say the word choice i will be um, I will be alerted 
to the fact that you told us we were choice shaming you, but then you come back around and say, oh, well, I knew he wasn't the right choice for president, but I still went and I, I, I did my thing. I went and this was the time it was supposed to be for healing and yada, yada, yada. And I'm just like, okay, um, it does not make sense. It does not make sense. Um, and she, she, she went on to say that she was receiving so much hate, just so much hate. But the thing about it is you had to know that was going to happen. You had to know that was going to happen because when they said they dropped your name down in the ballot, because we, okay, so this is where, this is where I, I'm, I'm, I've got to decide whether or not to give Chrisette too much or just enough because Jennifer Holiday, I think it was, was scheduled to sing at the Trump inauguration. We grabbed Jennifer by her edges and pulled her back unto us and said, sis, you better don't. You better not. If you do, you're canceled. And that's that on that. And Jennifer said, oh, no, okay, well, never mind then. <laughs> she said, oh, if, it's, if, if that's the issue, then never mind then. And she said she really didn't uh, understand. She didn't think that it would be that big a deal and da 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 And she um, said once she found out how important it was to her fans for her not to do it, she decided not to do it because she knew where her bread was buttered, where her wheat was turned into bread, and that subsequent, subsequent bread was buttered by the cows of the fans <laughs> who have churned and created the butter. She already knew. So she said, no, I, I just, mm -mm, I'm not going to be able to do that. So she canceled the performance. And then they started dropping a couple more names and this, that, and the other. And then Chrisette's name came up. And we said to Chrisette, as we said to Jennifer, if, that's, if, I'm, if I'm remembering correctly and that's who it was, you better don't. You better not do that. If you do that, sis, over. We're through. And she did it. So then she comes back talking about, oh, and I just, I received so much hate. It was so much hate. I just have never received that much hate in my life. Oh, it was terrible death threats and this and that and the other. And I can't believe, oh, I'm so shocked. But we told you before you did it. We told you before you did it. That one time when I was a child, my mother said, stop running in the house. Don't run, you know, because we have just moved. I wasn't used to the new house. The floors were slicker than I was accustomed to this, that, and the other. Don't run in this house. You know, just walk. If you need to get somewhere, walk briskly. Just don't run in the house. I took off, started running. I was about three. I ran head first into a desk. Had a gigantic knot on my fold, just right all up in the here region. And, you know, I cried. I hollered. And we had to put, you know, some <laughs> frozen potatoes on it to get that knot down. Um, but... What my mother did do was say, I told you not to run in the house. <laughs> like, it, I, and I knew. There are plenty of times growing up that I, my mama said, do not do this. I did this. And she came back and said, what did I say? And now I'm sitting here bleeding and carrying on. When I was a child, when I was four, I got up on the monkey bars at school. They told us, don't get on the monkey bars today. Don't get on the monkey bars. And I'm like, why? I get on the monkey bars every day, sis. What's going on? I got on the monkey bars, fell off, broke my arm. I, it was like, I told you not to get on the monkey bars. Me and my little mangled arm were sitting there like, you sure did. What can I do? <laughs> you know, I'm not going to walk over to the monkey bars and, and, and confront the whole playground and say, hear ye, hear ye. I'm tired of this. How dare the monkey bars drop me and I break my I didn't do all that. I was like, oh, they really did tell me. I kind of forgot because I was four and I wanted to play on the monkey bars. Um, but they did say, don't get on the monkey bars. So what is, well, I can't be mad at nobody but me. <laughs> and I have never been upset with anybody but myself. Chris Ed is going around acting like she's shocked and surprised like we did not give her fair warning and say sis if you do this there will be consequences and repercussions she acted shook and shocked uh yeah so she says she's been receiving hate she goes on to say she you know when she did something prior she didn't say what it was and i don't recall um she said she did something before and she received a lot of hate she said that she um when she was on reality tv she received a lot of hate as well now, I can say I sat and watched R&B Divas, and I recently went back into re-watching R&B Divas because I missed the girls. Bring them back. Um, not Stacey Francis, um, and definitely not uh, King Kong Price, but um, bring R&B Divas back. That was a cute little show. I miss seeing Faith Evans. That's my mother. Um, but anyway, she was talking about when she was on reality TV, she received a lot of hate as well. But I can say, Chrisette, when you were on reality TV, you were acting crazy. You were acting like your, your, pers your personality and your singing, your... Your uh, professional personality and your personal personality are two different girls. And we were shook. We was like, who is this hoe out here confronting the girls? She's singing about peace and carrying on and, you know, got all these you know, rich hips, the fat vegan and carrying on slogans. And then here she come acting a fool. What in the world? We were shocked. Um, 
So I'm sitting here like she's like, I just keep receiving hate. I just, when I was on reality TV, when I did this other thing, and now that I've done this, I just keep receiving hate. And I'm just like, well, sis, maybe, just maybe you doing stuff to provoke the hate in the girls. Maybe you should keep your life a little more private. Maybe. I don't know if that's going to help. But it's a, it's a thought. It's a possibility. Um, they brought up payments. And she says, um, and they, she made some good points. She was like, they were saying that, oh, you only did this for a check, yada, yada, yada. And she was saying, well, anytime I sing, I'm singing for a check. So that, <laughs> and I was like, okay, yes, valid, makes perfect sense. Um, I wish anytime I got on here and opened my big old mouth and started singing, the girls would drop a few coins in my, my purse, but they don't drop no coins in my purse. So I cannot be mad with her about trying to get a check. But again, we already told you how this was gonna go. I'm not mad at Chris for singing at the inauguration personally. I'm not, I mean, I think it was stupid and I wish she wouldn't have, um, especially bringing Travis Green. Ain't nobody ever read Travis Green for singing at the inauguration. He up here winning in the gospel realm. Ain't nobody saying, oh, Travis, no, we don't. That's not, and see, I'm not going to get too much into it because that's a whole conversation. I can get over there talking about Tina and Travis and Christianity and how they, some people feel like um, Trump has Christian values, but I'm not going to do that right now. I'm just going to say uh, the girls do need to read Travis Green as well if we're going to read Chris Ed. Um but yeah, I was. I felt like it was very stupid that she sang at the night. I didn't watch and I didn't care nothing about the inauguration. I just know that Beyonce wasn't going to be there. I know they asked her, but I know she said no. Um, but yeah, I, I just, what really bothered me about Chrisette is that she, her responses to us, her fans, letting her know, hey girl, we, we don't appreciate this. This is the opposite of who we are and what we are. And we, we don't want you to do that. She came back with, well, since I had on a Basquiat skirt, I am here. I'm singing. I am trying to heal the, the nation and the world with Basquiat on my legs and just get into it, get with it. And we was just like, it's still a no from us. So that's what always got on my nerves about this whole situation is that she just comes out and must be the Brooklyn in her, honey, because no one has time for the confrontation. She comes out of nowhere giving confrontation and it's like, we don't we don't need this from you um but yeah she made good points about coming out of uh, you know whenever she's in front of a mic she's getting paid so i'm not gonna read her about you know shucking and jiving for a dollar because that's what she that is her living that's what she does to make a living she sings um she goes on and then how she was dropped from i don't even remember what it was in columbia somebody's rig label honey and i did question i thought she was under her own label and she clarified that for me and said uh, that yes, I am on the Rich Hipster label, which is her own label, uh, but we were signed to a distribution deal with Columbia or whoever. And that made sense. And she said, okay, so they dropped the distribution, which is what she should have said in the whole long spiel. You writing all this other stuff, just go ahead and say the label that I'm signed to for distribution. Because we sit here like, well, I was sitting here like, but sis, you're your label. But okay, so she clarified that and said that, um, you know, anything that she puts out now will be independent, completely independent. So good for you. If you can make a couple dollars being independent, that's wonderful. Um, she went on to talk about, they did discuss her uh, suicidal thoughts, which, again, that didn't surprise me. That didn't, nothing about that was shocking or took me to a place where I'm like, oh, I must, I must feel a certain type of different way than I felt. Because, again, artists, creatives are very sensitive people. I am one of them, so I know what's tea. Um, and, again, I'm just, I told you, I tell y'all all the time, I'm just ready. I'm ready to go. I, if I could just, I woke up this morning really like, I would certainly rather die than get up and go to work this morning. I mean, that's just, uh, that's the way me and a lot of other creatives think. It's just how it comes out. Um, and I, it's not, it ain't for play play. Like I really would have rather been dead this morning and got up and go to work, but I'm up and I'm on my way and that's just the way it is. Um, so they discussed that. She went on to talk about how she went to a yoga retreat. She went on to a 200 hour yoga course. And I'm saying like, that sounds like rehab. Why you ain't just say you went to a rehab with yoga? But okay. So she went on, um, because she had mentioned she was popping Xanax and drinking carrying on. And I'm like, okay, so again, this sounds like rehab to me. I, I'm maybe just, I'm speculating, but it sounded like she went to a rehabilitation center that had yoga programs <laughs> and she took the yoga course. Um, but anyway, she said she found peace and was, was delivered through yoga. And I'm saying like, but all that stuff you were talking about before, it seems like you would have, you would have been doing yoga prior to, cause you were so deep and, you know, peace and love and light and no shade to the peace and love and light girls. Cause I'm kind of one of them, but <laughs> it's just like, 
just you just discovered yoga and yoga has just now become your your piece okay cute <laughs> and so she, she did all of that and then she discussed uh christianity and apparently yoga is yoga's a religion now i don't know she said something about being a yogi in her um in her dissertation that i, I didn't read all of um but if she she said something like will christians understand that i am now a yogi or something i'm like what in the world what's a yogi you a bear <laughs> she's just smarter than the average what's going on here um but yeah she she found she found yoga and found her deliverance i don't know um and then she started talking about christianity and how her mother's um you know one of the black moms with the long skirt and the prayer cloth on her head um and just you know praise the lord and i'm saying like well i kind of kind of got you I, I'm, I'm almost here with you because you know my family is very 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 christian yeah they are very ooh, child child jesus if you ever say anything that may have a question at the end of it concerning that bible a lot of my family members will be just like um who do you think you're talking to and i just won't be talking to them because i got a lot of questions a lot a lot a lot of questions um but my family is so obnoxious about the bible that i'm just like oh girl well okay i just i'll try to read it myself and find out what i want to know and then i never find out i will have just read the verses and now i got more questions but whatever child whatever um, so she goes on to discuss Christianity and she was saying that a lot of her family, um, and a lot of Christians in general are just, you know, the Lord will make a way and we just have to sit and, and wait on the Lord to do something about it and this, that, and the other. And I did agree with her in saying that, um, no, like, yes, the Lord will make a way, uh, but faith without works is dead. And I had to say is, is faith without works, it should be our dead. Faith, oh, wait, wait, am I wrong? Faith? Nope, faith aren't dead. Faith without works is dead. <laughs> so you sitting around here giving, oh, the Lord will just heal, he'll work it out, you know. And he will work it out. Oh, wow. The car just swooped in and got my spot. Tragic. Oh, another spot. I'll take it. Uh, yeah, faith without works uh, equals death. Death. It's just, it's not going to happen for you. So I, I was, how you doing? I was rocking with her about that. Hey, good to see you. All right. <laughs> Niggas is cheesing down. I know I'm cute, but dang. Um... But yeah, I, I was, I was, I, I, I agreed with her about um, Christianity, and yes, girl, we can pray, and yes, the Lord will work it out. But also, we kind of have to make a couple moves our, ourselves. Let me get in here. Um, we kind of have to do a few things to ensure that the Lord knows what exactly we want. We can't just be sitting here acting like, oh, okay, well, Trump's the president. Mm. Or we can't just be sitting here like, oh, well, I'm not going to vote because God, you know, he's got it. I can't make the decision because Hillary's awful, too. Okay, but yeah, yeah, Hillary, I mean, she might not be, the, you know, the greatest dancer, uh, but she's been in the White House before and she knows protocol and procedure at least. Oh, I can't do it today. I'm not going to preach to y'all today. Um, and she went on to say that, you know, she she was open to knowledge and open to learning and she's comfortable admitting that she was wrong. And I'm saying like, you just got comfortable in the last couple of days because you had got up here. I was caping for Tina just the other day. So I just, I, I was going back and forth. I was like, yeah, that's a good point. But no, I'm, I'm not seeing that. Yeah, that's a good point. But no, no, I don't really feel it for that. So I just, just, ooh. And then they brought up the miscarriage. I'm so late to work, child. I'm so late. They brought up the miscarriage and um, how that wasn't her photo and if she really had a miscarriage. I think she really did have a miscarriage. I do think that she had a miscarriage. I just think it was very, 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 very stupid of her to find somebody's photograph on the internet and post it as you're an own without saying, you know, this is a representation of what I've gone through. Um, but this is not my actual, and, you know, miscar it looked fake. It looked like you were begging us to pay attention to you, which is what we're doing, honey. I've been sitting here. I've given you at least two hours of my time in the past like, week and a half. Um, so you, you, you working it out, but girl, we don't, we don't want to see no fake foolishness from you. That is so ridiculous. Anyway, child. These are my thoughts on her breakfast club, <laughs> club interview. I'm going to run in here to work. I got to run to the bank and carry on and all of that. So I'll catch y'all in, in a little bit because I got two more videos to do if I can. It's been dark lately. I don't know what's up, but peace.